Dr. Michael Brown is extremely clear. He endorses his close personal friend, Sid Roth, 100%. Brown has been on Sid's ridiculous TV program, It's Supernatural, many times. He's even been a guest host. Hello, I'm Michael Brown filling in for Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it is naturally supernatural. Dr. Michael Brown, uh, you've been a friend of mine for many years. Uh, you've been a friend of mine for many years. My dear friend, Sid Roth. I had a desire in my heart. I wanted an oceanfront condo. And so I began to confess, I have an oceanfront condo and it is paid for. Supernatural oils literally flowing from our hands. Some would get it on the backs of their necks, some would get it from their foreheads, others would have it flowing from their feet. Do you find it's contagious? <laughs> I asked my friend, Dr. Michael Brown, who's a Semitic language scholar. I've known Mike for, uh, he just reminded me, 29 years. Uh, Mike. I have been friends with Sid Roth now for 30 years. We first met in 1984, and as long as I've known Sid, he's burned for two things. He Burn to see Jewish people saved, come to faith in Jesus, come to know Yeshua as their Messiah, and he's burned to see God's power. On October 28th, 2014, Dr. Michael Brown had Sid Roth on his show and did a nice interview with him. I'm scrolling through this because I want you to see a comment, and you will also see Dr. Brown's reply. Renee says, I'm so sorry, Dr. Brown. I am enormously grateful for you and your ministry, but I have to warn you that Sid Roth is a deceiver. I have caught him telling a story on a television broadcast of how God supernaturally drew people to him to witness to in a cafe, and then telling the exact same detailed story on a VHS tape my mother received from his ministry, but with a couple elements changed, different location and timing. I've detected that he always seems to be telling some extraordinary story of some miraculous thing God did through him, which I would have no problem believing. The Holy Spirit is alive and active today in the lives of genuine believers. But I am discerning that he always seems to be exalting himself. I am sure that there have been people saved through his ministry, and I'm glad that whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. But I do believe that Mr. Roth is not the man of God you think he is. Please consider this and pray for God to show you if this is the truth about Mr. Roth or if I'm wrong about your friend. God will show you because you, uh, because I know you seek him earnestly. So he replies, I've been a personal friend of Sid Roth for more than 30 years, and I have other friends who work with him day and night. He lives a godly, prayerful life of and witnesses to the lost day and night. You can differ with his theology or with his TV guests, but I know the man well, and I have close friends who are eyewitnesses to the Lord working through him. So there you have it, Dr. Michael Brown unequivocally 100% endorses Sid Roth and backs him up even when he's challenged. Uh, Sid, I've been with you so many times on radio and TV. It's my great joy to welcome you to my broadcast today. Friends, my son-in-law, Ryan, has often traveled with Sid. There's no hype. This is reality. Uh, Dr. Michael Brown and I go back some 30 years, and uh, I don't know a finer scholar in the world, on the planet, uh, Dr. Brown has a degree from New York University. I have an oceanfront condo, and guess what? What? It's paid for. <laughs> I like that. How would you like that? Now, I'm with my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown. Mike, how long have we known each other? We became friends in 1984. She said, I put oil in his muffins. Throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> well, he God owns it all. No, he don't. No, he don't. Because if he did, you'd have no seed to sow. See, you have to understand who you are. Everything Jesus has, you have. Now, are you willing to exercise it? What percentage of your dreams come true? Uh, when God gives me a dream, it's 100%. But he's moving at a new point in, in the spirit. And I believe, I have to say this because he's just getting started again with this new level. I believe when you hear something from God, it's going to be 100%. Yeah, I believe that's it. Here you can see Keith Ellis on the It's Supernatural School of Ministry page. And this is where Dr. Keith Ellis conducts church and his Samuel School. I want to say this, Dr. Jesse, Brother Jesse. He walked over there to me and was talking to me. And while you were talking to me, you put your hand on my shoulder. And it was like I was getting a sunburn. And I'm feeling it right now being near Sid. <laughs> The power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here now. We became friends in 1984. 
That's, that's a long time, whatever that 33 is. 33 years. Led him in the warfare to stop the devil's plans for World War III. I'm going to show you a bunch of clips so that you can see the kind of insane content that Sid Roth has on his show all the time. It's not just a bit different or a bit out there. It is fraudulent and it is dangerous. Two-month-old baby dying in the hospital. The parents kidnapped the child took the child to a Smith Wigglesworth meeting, and Smith looks at the child, looks at the parents, and say, can I do what God tells me to do? Well, what would you do if you were the parents? The child's dying anyway, right? He takes the baby, two-month-old, throws the baby against the wall. The baby throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> then the baby's on the floor. He ta have you ever seen someone play soccer? Have you ever seen them uh, kick a soccer ball? He does that with the baby. The baby falls into the congregation. No crying. Is it dead? One hundred percent healed. She goes, he's the witch doctor. And I was like, oh, oh, I get it. And, and that morning, I had prayed very differently before going out and ministering to the people all day. I had, as, as we were praying in the spirit, as we were praying in tongues that, that morning, I prayed something I had never prayed before, but I've prayed it ever since. I said, and may every curse and assignment that they try to put on us today, may it bounce back on them and teach them a lesson in Jesus' name. And as soon as he bumped into me, so lightly bumped into me, that man went flying backwards through the air. The people out there actually parted as he went flying through the air backwards. My dear friend, Sid Roth. You believe it was from the angel Gabriel. What happened? I was doing a lot of fasting and praying. Now that may sound real spiritual, but I was a student at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. On his own ministry website, this guy claims to be a doctor. But on this show, he isn't called Dr. Maloney for some reason. Here's his own website where he claims to hold a DD, a THD, and a PhD, which are the uh, first one is an honorary degree. The second one is a pretty serious theological degree. And the third one is the highest level of education that you can attain, a Ph.D. I did send him an email asking for the names of the schools. So I'm sure that we'll all be hearing exactly where he got those advanced degrees very soon. And uh, we didn't have a cafeteria, so I had no money. So I <laughs> had no other choice but to fast. But God used it. And I think it was upon the 14th day that I had a 22-minute visitation from an angelic person. I knew it was not Jesus because when I was born again, Jesus was the one that appeared to me. So there's a difference, of course. And I uh, was given mandates and certain scriptures that I would identify my life, ministry, calling in the future. and. Um, it was at that time that I received uh, just certain impartations and callings, and I, I didn't wait. I was 19. I just, you know, hey, I'm ready. Let's go for it. And I just started stepping out as a student, and God began to give me words of knowledge and wisdom and prophetic words for students, and they, they were quite specific. I, 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 am, I am in awe of the gifting that you operate in. And Jesus looked at me and expected me to put my hands out to pray for the man. Well, when I did... James Maloney says that he met Jesus after teleporting to another country, and then Jesus entered into his body. He entered into my body. Jesus said that, that David wrote that psalm, and he memorized that psalm because when he was in the depths of hell...
he said he rehearsed that psalm over and over again. And he said, I cleared a way out in that place for you and for everyone in, in Messiah to pray from those depths. He said, I prayed myself out of hell because but this I, particular one he had was a soprano sax and he had this sax in, in his hands and he started to play it over me, you know, because he sings songs of deliverance over us. But I found out that he was. We became friends in 1984 playing this beautiful saxophone over me and he, he, he took it away from his mouth and handed it to me and he said, you play. And I go, Lord, I can't play like that. <laughs> he said, that's because you're doing it wrong. He said, let me show you. He said, stand up. So I stood up. My wife was still sleeping. So Jesus comes into your bedroom and starts jamming on the saxophone right next to your bed, but your wife doesn't wake up? I guess that way she can't be expected to verify this idiotic story. And I looked around me, he goes, see all that around you? He said, that's the Holy Spirit and the, the presence and glory of my Father. He said, that's always there. He said, what's wrong is you're not breathing in heaven first. Yeah, you know, Kevin, uh, you had downloaded in you when you were in heaven things that you don't even know yet, things that you don't even know yet, things that you don't even know yet, but it's ready to come out. I saw, uh, the, I saw our spirit get opened, our body got opened up, and I saw our spirit. And our spirit was surrounded with that, what looked like a beehive of thousands of, of, of demons with twinkly eyes. And my interpreter said, I put my finger on her on head and I, I said, in the name of Yeshua, unroll. And when I did that, I, had, I saw the golden hand of Jesus go into her body. Francis Miles was just at an online conference with some of the worst heretics con artists and false teachers on the planet, including Bill Johnson, Benny Hinn, Patricia King, and Robert Henderson. And there is Dr. Michael Brown right in the middle of all of them. Pray. I used to pray, God, help me to love broccoli as much as the way I love chocolate. <laughs> and the Lord came up and he says, General Michael, General Michael this, is, this is one of my generals of the Army of the Saints, Army of the Saints on Earth. Then he says, General, General Hammond, Hammond, this is General this is Michael, General Michael head of my the head uh, of army of angels. of angels. And he says, yeah, you're going to co-labor together to accomplish my work and destroy the powers of darkness and defeat the armies of wicked spirits. Then I was out here just kind of watching, kind of I was. Notice how all of the guests on this show are masters of the humble brag. After they tell ridiculous stories about themselves and their spiritual superpowers, they sell stuff kind of from behind watching and we were just talking like you and I would talk strategizing mm -hmm. and going there and uh, and when you talk about it now I'm using those strategies around the world the greatest corporate weapon that the church has is the shout of faith and it goes off in the spirit realm like an atomic bomb does Whoa. this I, I talked to a, a guy that uh, his job is restoring Bibles, hundreds every month he restores. He said it's not, in fact, he's watching this show right now uh, because he heard about this and he can't believe it. And, and, and find something to look at. So this fraud was selling this oil to people who gave donations in little bottles all over the world because it had a super miraculous powers, yet he's wearing a hearing aid. Hey, maybe rub a little of that magic oil on your ear, pal. How this looks as good as the Bible before it was in the oil for a couple of years. This is called fraud, boys and girls. He made up a story about some guy that said you could never have a Bible in oil without it all smearing. He just made that up. It's not true. My dear friend, Sid Roth. Now here's a short clip from my fellow YouTuber friend, Brian Bezel 3 who actually got a vial of this fake miracle oil and he did some experiments and he proved that this whole thing was just a stupid hoax. And he did that well before the media got involved and proved it as well. And uh, now let's go back to the first experiment that I did, which is seeing what would happen to a book such as the Bible, not anything like the Bible really, the Gospel of Judas, when it is submerged in mineral oil, straight mineral oil, for now a period of three months. Nothing. Yeah. Look Those at none of this notes. ink. None of this ink is gone. Oh my goodness. If I was to put a Bible in oil, it would not look like this. 
it's actually doing what it shouldn't be. It's preserving it when it should be destroying it. That yeah. shows you it's inverted. It's a kingdom thing. It really is. Okay, so here we are. We've got the Bible. It's been in this small Rubbermaid container for exactly three months, save one day. I'm opening it up for the first time. Hopefully I'm not going to get uh, so slippery that it flies out of my hand again. But it's the same gospel of, oh, this is so slippery. It's just, I don't know how they do this. Okay, so we take a look at it. The binding looks fine. It is completely submerged in oil now. Oh man. Okay, so here's the first. Here's the first um, page. You can see. It looks pretty good to me. No, uh, no, no uh, blurring of the ink or anything. Now let's go to that page where I highlighted some stuff and take a look. As you can see, the 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 uh, pink and the yellow look pretty good to me. They they don't look uh, runny or or uh, you know kind of faded where they're going away or or in any way the Bible being destroyed even the gold leaf that's on this crazy gospel of Judas is is looking good oh I'm glad I put the the white <laughs> white trash liners down I can't help but make a mess but you know what this tells us what's happening in that vat of oil right there that you see is nothing more than what's happening right here I I'm convinced of it and before his very eyes, the, now, now you, you, most of you, you don't have a clue about what I'm ready to tell you. You've never, it's never even crossed your radar. He really, what did he turn into? First time it was a bat, big. But you, you actually saw him and... There was a man. Yeah. Turned the flashlight on to himself and went into a creature. I saw that with my eyes, yes, sir. How did you get it into your head you wanted to raise the dead? Of all the miracles down through the historical events of the Bible, I chose dead raising. And my wife, <laughs> my, my wife asked me to, let's start lower. <laughs> <laughs> Headaches. <laughs> Different things, but I, I'm not that kind of human being. I, if, if, when I'm if, trying to get out, the devil shows up in hell and tells me, I'm going to keep you here. You know too much about the occult. You know too much. I've given you too much rank, too much secrets. I need to destroy you. So as he's saying that, he's coming, he's going to launch at me. As he's launching towards me, this cross appeared in hell. This cross appeared in hell. So this guy was in hell fighting the devil when a cross suddenly appeared. Don't you think they'd have a no crosses allowed rule in hell? But, uh, oh well, what do I know? And I put it on him, and he fell out like a toddler, out like a toddler. And, and, and I, I, so I got back up and I ran, and then he tells me, this is no hype, this is reality. I mean, I, somewhere down the deeper part of hell, he shows up again, he said, I'm gonna destroy you. So here I am talking with him in demonic tongues. So here I am talking with him in demonic tongues. <laughs> So here I am talking with him in demonic tongues. And I saw God's angels first begin to ascend upon Jesus and then descend upon Jesus. And I knew by revelation that he was sending them out into different nations in the continent of Africa. I want to talk about his wig so bad, but I will not. To further the kingdom of God and to minister in nations and cities for ministries and individuals. God has angels like that. He wants all of his people to understand that they have the privilege to co-labor with. How important is it to pray in the spirit in supernatural languages, in tongues? Manamana. It's extremely important, Sid. Manamana. I cast Dr. Candace Smitherman. She is not a real doctor. She has a fake doctoral degree from a diploma mill, just like many of the guests on this show. Sid Roth is just selling stuff. Made a full commitment to the Messiah, and you would too, 
if you had had an encounter like she had. Um, inside the mansion, not only is the royal banquet table to the right, but you go upstairs to um, a, like a royal suite that's up there. And the royal suite in and of itself is, is gorgeous. A lot of royal uh, blue velvet and gold. But beyond that is another set of stairs that goes up to vats. Oil, grain, gold, silver, water, wool, flax, the commodities, the commodities that we need to operate on the earth. Everything that we touch, Sid, this table, chairs, everything, it was first made in heaven and then it was given to us as thoughts and ideas that we brought forth into the earth realm. Everything we see was first made in heaven, and then it was given to us as thoughts and ideas that we brought forth into the earth realm. This is not Christianity. This is nonsense at best. So everything in these vats is available to us today in accordance with the word, Hosea chapter 2. When the, um, when the uh, nation of Israel repented, well, those things were taken away from them, but when the nation of Israel repented, God gave back all of those things. And the word says that Jezreel, who is him, God sows, is sowing those things back into the earth. And so it is available to us. We climb up the stairs in the spirit. It, grab the gold you need, grab the bread you need, the revelation, grab the wine you need, which is new opportunities, and grab that anointing oil and anything else you need, and you can go in for your friends and family too. Dr. Michael Brown and I go back some 30 years, and uh, I don't know a finer scholar in the world, on the planet. Sid Roth, you don't know the difference between a scholar and a con artist. Your praise of Dr. Michael Brown is as useless as the never-ending pile of bovine scatology that you sell on every single one of your dumb shows. He comes out again, and then I told him, I'm going to destroy you, I told him. And I show him the marks that I saw myself. He said, he said, oh, you're a fool. I give you those marks. You, I own you. Again, he went to grab me for the last time. The cross of Jesus Christ appeared. And, and, as a, and he fell, I mean, he, he actually fell on the foot of the cross. And this and that, and look at these needle marks. And I just saw the hands of Jesus in a vision, just put his hands on. And 30 seconds later, all the needle marks disappeared. And that, hey, that got, that got him excited. And then, and then I said something, I said, just, just, and, a, and he fell. I mean, he, he actually fell on the foot of the cross. My dear friend, Sid Roth. And the demons would chant to the clock. Every time the clock would uh, chime, they would chant, forever, forever, you will be here. Forever you will be unloved, 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 forever unloved. Never, never will you ever feel loved. I really think these demons need to work on the not very horrifying quality of their chanting. Unloved, unloved, forever unloved. Never, never will you ever feel loved. Never, never will you leave here. Things like that over and over and over, constantly. When one demon got tired of say, saying it, another one would pick up the chant. I know these are demons in hell, but still, isn't it nice to hear that they help each other out? Tell me about those body parts you saw. All right. Uh, this place in heaven that's called the Hall of Miracles is probably my favorite place to go to when I it visit be heaven. It would be yeah. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's an enormous hall, miles and miles long, and it's gold, gold floor, with beautiful chandeliers that's all diamonds hanging from the whole ceiling. And all, down this hall, there are doorways, all doorways. And so I, I, the Lord brought me there and I said, can I go in and see what's in the doorways? And he said, sure, you can go in. So I went in the first doorway. The first doorway on the left was a room full of body pots. There were legs, there were arms, there were eyeballs, there were ears. There were all the things that God's children here on the earth would need. He's got them there, in this room, ready. If we pray, if we live in intimate fellowship with Him, if we turn from our wicked ways, stop sinning, stay, live holy lives, we can ask Him for those things, not just for ourselves, 
for others too. And he said, if we would do that, we would keep his angels busy day and night, bringing those treasures that are in the Hall of Miracles to the earth now. And then all of a sudden, I looked over here and Jesus was sitting up above the bed and you know, halfway in the wall. And the next thing I knew, I was sitting next to him halfway in the wall. And you can see through the walls, you can hear everything that's going on around you. I could see my husband in the next room, the bathroom, and he was crying out to God. God, where are you? And all of a sudden I looked at Jesus and he's looking at me like this. And I looked at him and I said, You boy break up! Wait a minute. It's not my time to go. And I said, but who's going to call me back in my body? I'd like to just pause for one moment and acknowledge the cutting edge special effects. And he said, you are. Hmm. And I said, okay. And, and it was like, God, Jesus was, was training me. <laughs> and, he's saying, and I'm saying, okay, in the name of Jesus, I command my spirit back into my body. I command, I command my, spirit my spirit back, back into, into my, my body. body. In the name of Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Joshua Mills is known as the golden preacher because of being coated frequently in heavenly gold dust, and I mean, I've, I've just never seen something like that. He is, every square inch of his body is coated, but God's expanding his knowledge of the glory. Now he's traveling to foreign countries without airplanes. He calls it being transported in the glory. In the glory. It's supernatural. Now, Joshua, I can't wait to kind of pick your brain, pick your brain, pick your brain on the glory, because you're one of these people that were a forerunner in this. But you said the glory came with three progressive uh, supernatural experiences. Tell me about that. There were three very specific signs that began to take place. The first one was the fragrance of heaven would come and actually fill the atmosphere. When that began to happen, uh, people began to run to the altars. The second sign that happened was the oil, the supernatural oil began flowing. Um, I would get it a little bit, but it was happening for more of my worship team, the different... Now, when you say flowing, yeah. explain to me, flowing uh, from your hands? You know what? Supernatural oil literally flowing from our hands. Some would get it on the backs of their necks. Some would get it from their foreheads. Others would have it flowing from their feet. This is what the world needs. Oily feet. Yes. Do you find it's contagious? <laughs> that it, it, it spreads from one person to another? There's always an impartation in the Spirit of God. And so there is an impartation in these things. And it seems... So people watching us... God spoke to me and said, people will live and not die if you will write this book. God spoke to me and said, people will live and not die if you will write this book. We became friends in 1984. But Jesus came to me and said, Brian, I cannot let you take this book. And he looked at me in the book. eyes with love that We're melted me, and he said, book. you are not ready for that book. Then he promised, but, but I, I will bring, bring you back, back one day, and, I will, give you and I will give you that book. What was the title? Written on the cover of the book was John 22. Uh, but there's only 21 chapters in John. What's this 22? <laughs> well, John 22. Go back to John 14, 12, and you'll see that there is a greater works generation. The works that I do, you will do even greater works than these. I believe the John 22 generation will be a people that do the greater works of Jesus. They will not add to the scripture, and, and that's a sealed book. But So when you add a chapter to the Bible, after God gives it to you on your next visit to heaven, you won't be adding to the Bible. But it is a book that is unfolding, and the works of Jesus will be replicated by an entire generation of people that believe fully in the power of God. In three-part audio CD teaching series, you will receive your Heavenly Father's love and overcome all fear, guilt, and shame. Receive Heaven's perspective for your life. Understand the miracle and redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. Learn to pray more effectively to overcome every symptom trying to come against you. 
Every single episode of this show makes the same kinds of ridiculous and fraudulent claims with commercials that seem to go on forever. Recognize the operation of lying symptoms in your life and render them powerless. Draw close to the Holy Spirit and let Him be your prayer partner. At special prices, we'll meet with your delight. To take advantage of them, follow the Mr. Service Flight. Understand the power of your supernatural prayer language and how to use it. Included on each audio CD are Mary's anointed prayers for... And out of all of my years of ministry, I, it was the most uh, sick, diseased, infirmed group of people I've ever seen. Uh, children with their limbs blown off because of mines. And I'm overwhelmed. We became friends in 1984. But what overwhelmed me the most was I'm standing there thinking I'm alone. What am I supposed to do? It's in the middle of the afternoon. It's the next day, of course. And I look to my left, and Jesus was standing right next to me. It's nice not to be alone. Yes. <laughs> Especially oh. there. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You're here. But it was so amazing, Sid, because he just... Wait a second. I'm pretty sure that's Dan Fogelberg. Had this matter of fact look in his eye. And so he just went down in the crowd. And of course, you know, I'm going to follow him. And I just, I would. yeah. I would too. Dan Fogelberg was great. You and I just started following him, and he would go up to like there was a man that had consumption or something. He should have been a 180 pound man, looked 90 pounds, uh, curled up in a fetal position, was dying, was uh, hardly able to breathe, just uh, just just a lump of flesh. And Jesus looked at me and expected me to put my hands out to pray for the man. Well, when I did. He entered into my body, and the man saw the hands of Jesus. But there were my hands, but there were Jesus' hands. <laughs> and the man was supernaturally lifted up. It was about four feet from us, no binding, loosing, didn't have to cast out, speak in, do nothing, just the manifest presence of Jesus lifted him up. He stood straight up, and he filled out to the proper weight instantaneously as if he never had the condition. I know this is just a dramatic reenactment, but do you see a problem here? These are two completely different people. And Jesus, just a matter of fact, just went to another person, another person, I followed him. And so no miracle took less than um, you to break off the lies of the enemy, overcome every symptom of sickness, step into a greater level of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will also receive Mary's 21 Keys to Healing bookmark. 796, uh uh, 398, eight piece bedroom set, 1998, uh uh, 999, right price furniture, 259 and fond. Come get some. It includes the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to obtain your victory on an ongoing basis. Included are key number two, worshiping the Lord continually. Key number four, forgiving yourself and others. Key number five, stop negativity, change your mindset. Key number eight, start confessing God's word. Key number 10, pray in the name of Jesus. Key number 12, take communion every day. Key number 14, pray in the spirit. Would you, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Would you look in the camera and give a shout of faith? I want to see what it's like. Oh, what are they? Okay. Hallelujah! Amen! My goodness, you, that, yes. that was a shout. <laughs> Invite God into every room of your heart. Key number 19, partner with others, and so many more. I'm obviously directly right here in the car dealership, where you can see all the prices are crazy low. So why don't you get down here immediately and come check it out? Don't miss out on getting this brand new book, The Healing Journey, and anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, Conversations with Holy Spirit for Supernatural Breakthrough by Mary Haas, plus her 21 Keys to Healing bookmark. This is an exclusive offer for our rich Supernatural audience. The prices are so low, we're slashing them even lower. The prices, that is. Yours for a donation of $35. Wow, only $35? 
Man, I would have spent $35 just for that incredible bookmark. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9561. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Supernatural.